guys. So um, this is your last opportunity um, to bring your grade up. So you have your test tomorrow. Um, and then we're going to just do six problems right now. If you do them, you get extra credit. Um, and they'll be added to your test grade. Hopefully, um, this can help bring up some averages. So take a look at number one. One of the things that's covered on your test tomorrow is factory. So hopefully you recognize this is a perfect squares. So that means that I can take the square root of 4x squared, the square root of 81, and then I can do a plus and a minus parentheses. So that'd be a 2x here. Square root of 81 is a plus 9. The other I'd put a minus 9. Now remember, when that's equal to 0, I'm going to set each of these pieces equal to 0 as well. So I'll let 2x plus 9 equal 0, then I'll let 2x minus 9 equal 0. From there, my plus 9 moves over, 2x equals negative 9, then I'll divide by 2 on both sides. So my first answer would be negative 9 over 2. Second one, I take my minus 9 across, 2x equals positive 9, then I'll divide by 2 on both sides, x equals 9 over 2. Now, your test tomorrow is multiple choice, so remember that that's the same as if it said that. Okay, this and these are exactly the same thing, so it doesn't matter which one it looks like, they're, they're equal. Okay, so next one, um, you're going to need your difference of perfect cubes formula for this. So it will be on the board tomorrow. Uh, but when I'm looking at number one, the first thing I notice is that in the middle, this is a minus sign. So that means that I need to make sure that I'm using this formula right here. So if it's a cubed minus b cubed, it's a minus b, a squared plus ab plus b squared. So I'm going to use that formula here, okay, because I started with a minus. Now, the cubic root of x cubed is x. The cubic root of 343 is 7. And from there, I'm going to follow my formula right here. So a minus b is going to be an x minus 7. a squared is going to be an x squared plus 7x for my ab. And then 7 squared would be a plus 49. Now remember, if that's equal to 0, just like last time, I have to set both of these parts equal to 0. But then remember, we talked about on this day that this long part is never going to actually equal 0. So whenever you use a difference of cubes, you're actually just going to get one answer. I'll bring my minus 7 across. x equals 7. Keep in mind, that is going to be the only answer. Okay, for a cube, this extra long one is going to have no solutions. So that's why I'm going to keep only my x equals 7. That's the only answer for that one. Okay. Take a look at number 3. Notice that I can take a 4x out of both of these guys. 4x is going to come to the front. Out of 4x cubed, divide by 4x, that's an x squared. 4x divided by 4x is going to give me 100 left over. Then from there, I can square root both of these guys and break it down via perfect squares. So square root of x squared is x. Square root of 100 is plus 10 and minus 10. Also remember, I had a 4x out in front of that. From there, I'm going to look for my solutions. Remember that any time that you have an x in the front, that x equals 0. Then I have an x plus 10, so x is negative 10. And then for my negative 10, my x is going to be positive 10. So I have three answers. I put them on my number line. Negative 10 would be on this side. 0 in the middle. 10 on this side. Then remember from here, you have choices. Um, I'm going to show you the uh, graphing option. Um, mainly just because it seems like everybody thought this method was easier. So I'm going to type in my equation into the calculator. So 4x cubed minus 400x. Then I'm going to go to my graph. Okay, and then notice that I can't really see so good over here. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually zoom out. 
So zoom out and then enter. Okay, so here's my graph. Notice that it's above, below, above. So my graph goes like this. Now, obviously, I can kind of change the window on this if I want to. Maybe I'll make it negative 15 to 15. Um, and we'll make that negative uh, 200 to 200. Let me give you like a better picture of this graph. I guess that doesn't really help that much. Okay, but the graph is basically going like this. Here's negative 10, here's 10. The graph goes up, down, up. So remember what we talked about, that if I don't want to have to pick little test points on each of these subintervals, what I can do instead is just look at the graph. This chunk of the graph I can see is below, so it counts as a negative. This chunk of the graph I can see is above, so I know it's a positive. This chunk of the graph I can see is negative again. And then the last chunk over here is positive. Okay, now my next step would be to look right here. That's a greater than zero. And any time that I want a greater than zero, I know that I want the positives. So I would shade here and here. Now, for my circles, they're going to be open circles. Okay, and hopefully you remember the reason they're open is because that does not have an equal to on it. So I would say from negative 10 to 0, union 10 till infinity. Okay, take a look at number 4. Can take an x out of all of these guys. x squared is left over. 14x is left in the middle. And then that would be um, a 49 left over there. From there, this guy in here, unfortunately that's not a special, so I'm going to have to do a little mini t-chart. So, top of the chart, I'm putting a 49. The numbers that multiply to 49 are going to be 7 and 7. Now, there are other numbers as well, but I want a 14. 7 and 7 are going to be my guys. So, I'm going to have x, x squared plus 7x plus 7x plus 14, or 49, sorry. Then from there, I can look at these two guys and these two guys, look for what they have in common. I can take a 7 out of those. I can take a 7 out of those. So my 7 comes to the front. I have an x plus 7 left over. This 7 comes to the front. And then 7x divided by a, a 7 is another x. 49 divided by 7 is a 7. Then from there, I see that the, these guys match each other. That's good news for me because that means I have an x plus 7 as one factor. Um, and actually, I'm realizing I wrote this wrong. That shouldn't be a 7 at the bottom. That should be an x at the bottom, which means it should actually be an x on the outside here as well. So then from there, I can take out an x here plus 7. Okay, then from there, I see that I have x plus 7 twice. So that tells me that that's really an x plus 7 squared less than or equal to 0. Now, um, I'm going to have to, I guess, do this one on the back. Um, but pretend it's not there for right now. So for this guy, x in the front, x equals 0. Then x plus 7, x equals negative 7. And then from there, I'm going to set up my number line, negative 7 and 0. Now, look at your symbol here. I can see that that is going to be a closed dot. So, closed dot here, closed dot here. Then, remember, you have two choices. I'm going to do the graphing option, but if you wanted to, you could do the choosing a test point option. So, I'm coming back to here. I have x cubed plus 14x squared plus 49x. And then, I'm going to go into my graph. Okay, so there's my graph. I'm going to sketch it over here to the side. Here's negative 7. Here's 0. And I can see that my graph starts underneath. It kind of bumps, and then it passes through at 0. So when I'm filling in my chart, I notice that it's negative, negative, because it's below. And then on my last interval, it switches to a positive. So remember, negative means below the x-axis, and then positive means that it's above. Then from there, I look at my symbol here. This is a less than 0, 
and remember that for less than I want the negatives so I'm gonna shade here and then I'm gonna shade here so from there my final answer would be negative infinity to negative 7 union negative 7 to 0 now if you wanted to squish this all into one big interval that would be fine negative infinity to 0 that would be the same so you could choose to write it like this as two separate intervals or you could choose to squeeze it together like that and either one of those would be totally fine okay all right last two questions okay so we're going to do um number five right here so uh, i'm going to set up my t-chart over here to the side so I have negative 24 at the top. I need numbers that multiply to uh, 24 and subtract to 10. So I got 1 times 24, that subtracts to 23. 2 times 12, and then when I notice that can give me 10 here, I know those are my numbers. So I'm going to do 12 minus on the 2. So I have x squared minus 2x plus 12x minus 24. Remember, I'm separating my 10 into a 12 and a 2. From there, look for your GCF. can take an x out of these two. That leaves me with an x minus 2 left over. Take out a 12 from here. And when my 12 comes out, that's going to leave me with an x minus 2 there as well. Then I look at my factors. I notice that they, no they match each other. So I'll have my x minus 2 and then my x plus 12. Now remember, that's greater than or equal to 0. So I still have two things left to do. x is going to be 2 and negative 12. Because remember, it's always the opposite of the numbers in parentheses. Okay, and then from there, I'm going to set up my number line. Negative 12 is smaller, 2 is bigger. And I'm going to choose my circles. So I see I have a greater than or equal to. That tells me I need a closed circle and a closed circle. And then from there, I have two choices. I can do test points or I can do the graph. I'm going to do the graphing one again just because it seems like most of y'all like that better. So y equals, I'm typing this guy in right here. I have an x squared plus 10x. Oops. x squared plus 10x and then minus 24. Then I hit my graph button here. There's my graph. Okay, I can see that it's a U shape. I'm going to sketch that on here. So negative 12 is here, 2 is here, and my graph went like this. Okay, so obviously I'm drawing it a little bit smaller, but you get the idea just of the shape. Okay, then from there, it's above, positive, below, negative, above, positive. So remember, above counts as a plus when it's above the x-axis. Below the x-axis counts as a negative. That's why I'm putting a negative here. Okay, and then that one's obviously above as well. Then from there, I go back and look for the sign that they want. If I want this symbol, that means greater than 0, then I want the positives. So I'm going to shade here, and I'm going to shade here. Okay, then from there, remember, your answer is going to be negative infinity to negative 12, bracket, to show that it's closed, and then from 2 till infinity. Another thing that you should also remember is that this is called a disjunction. Okay, so you may see that on your quiz tomorrow, or your test tomorrow, you may not. Okay, last question. Um, I'm going to try to squeeze it in here. Um, so your equation was 4x squared minus 4x plus 5. So this is number 6. You're going to use your formula, which you will have tomorrow. Um, so it's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so that's the equation that we're going to be using here. So the first thing I'm going to do is list out my a, my b, and my c. My a is obviously going to be the 4 here from the front. My b is a negative 4. My c is a 5. 
So I'm going to do x equals negative b, which is negative negative 4, plus or minus the square root. b squared is negative 4 squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a, where my a is another 4. Okay, from here, I notice I have a minus a negative. That's going to cross out here to really just be a regular 4, plus or minus. And then in here, remember that this part in here is called the uh, discriminant. You don't have to know that. But I would go ahead and type that whole chunk into your calculator. Remember, you do not want to use the square root when you do that. So I'm going to do negative 4 squared minus 4 times 4 times 5. So I get a negative 64 under there. Okay, then on the bottom, 2 times 4, that's an 8. Okay, the other thing we talked about in class today is that whenever you have 64, if I try to type that in here under a square root, I'm going to get an error. So I have to remember that that negative 64 can be split up into 64 times negative 1, and then the square root of 64 is going to be 8, and the negative 1 is going to be an i. So really, that can reduce for me to 4 plus or minus 8i over 8. Okay, now from there, the last thing that I would do is look at each of these coefficients and see if any of those can reduce. So I notice that I have a 4, an 8, and an 8. Well, then all of those have a GCF. Those can all be divided by 4. So if I divide 4 by 4, let me get a little piece of scratch paper here. So if I divide 4 by 4, I'm going to get a 1 plus or minus then 8 divided by 4 is a 2i, and then 8 divided by 4 is a 2. So this step here, we were just reducing by dividing by 4. Okay. Um, so that's really all you have to know for tomorrow. You can do it. Um, remember, this is extra credit, and you get to use your notes. So we'll see you tomorrow.